Hey guys, Double Wide 6, and today we're going to be working on vinyl siding. So this uh, siding I'm using is made by Mastic, and it's called Newport Bay. It's a nice blue color, and you'll notice I'm using white corners with it, and a white J-channel, and a white soffit and fascia. So if you're building a shed and you're creating your own blueprint for what you're doing, one of the things that you want to think about as you're making your plans is uh, what type of siding do you want to use? Okay, there's shakes, there's Dutch lap, there's all kinds of different siding with different uh, lengths and heights. So this is 8 inch siding, it's uh, actually a Dutch lap. And I've calculated and figured out how I would get uh, pretty much a whole sheet I just cut like a quarter inch off the top of it and boom it fits right in so that's something that you can think about when you're calculating um, how to do a shed like this now uh, the corners a lot of people make them the exact same color as the building which is fine um, however I wanted to accent the corners a little bit so I went with white and up here is an aluminum fascia and a soffit and you'll notice I also have a white J-channel up here um, that, uh, you know, blends in with the building as well. So uh, that's how I did it. So just some things to think about. Now we'll show you how to get started with this. Just a tip to help you protect your building. You can wrap your building with house wrap or you can wrap it with tar paper down at the bottom and what that'll do is if you don't have gutters that'll help prevent splashback from rotting out your plywood I'm on a concrete slab and uh, there's also stone all around this shed so I have really good drainage and I'm not too worried about the uh, splashback so I'm actually going to skip that step and what that does for me is that allows me to easily see where my studs are so when I nail my vinyl siding I can nail into the studs uh, which I like to do for strength and where I live it's pretty windy one of the things to look at is around your windows you're going to need to put J channel if your windows don't come with it nowadays a lot of vinyl windows have uh, they're already made with um, the vinyl so that the vinyl siding can actually slide right in here and you don't need to cut the J channel you can use your J channel for inside corners in this manner and also um, as you go up top that's kind of how you finish off your vinyl siding with J channel when I bought the windows for the shed um, I made sure to get windows that already had the built-in J channel uh, it's less to buy as far as when you're buying your vinyl siding and it's it's one less step that you don't have to trim around all your J channels around each window so uh, I'd recommend Here's a piece of J channel, a little bit dirty, it rained here last night. And this window, this is what I'm talking about, it has the built in J channel so your, your vinyl will slide right in there. And we're also going to use J channel to help hold up the soffit. So see how there was a gap there, once this gets leveled and pushed up there it looks real nice and neat. And then your siding will get cut and fit right in the top there. On the outside of the door, we're going to put J channel there so that the siding can come up to that brick mold. And at the top of the door, hopefully you don't notice this, but I uh, calculated this was uh, two inches across. And then up top, I think I ended up cutting this at like one and five eighths so that it would be flush and even with the soffit on top of the door. So I don't need any J channel up there. The first thing I like to do is set my corners and I usually run them an inch longer than they need to be so they'll stick down just a hair uh, below the blue vinyl siding as you can see there. Now you can cut these just uh, by hand. Um, if you're going to cut them by hand I recommend uh, aviation snips. They work pretty well. The corner has a lot of different bends to it, so uh, it is a bit of a pain to cut. 
So I'm going to be cutting this with the uh, compound miter saw. And one thing I want to mention is, you know, the vinyl has a tendency to chip. Um, so you want to cut very slow. You want to use a blade that has a lot of teeth on it, like a uh, fine finish blade with carbide. And um, you also want to make sure that you put the side that you cut on the bottom of the building. Um, you don't want up top uh, a rough cut. So we'll keep that down towards the bottom. And um, you know, some guys cut with their blades backwards. Um, I've really seen no advantage in doing that. I've done that and uh, you know, I, I, I just find keeping the blade and cutting slow just the way it is uh, works fine for me. Before you go and just attach your vinyl siding, you, you want to take a level and get it perfectly level. So you can set your bubble and then when you're ready to attach it, you're going to take your nail and you're going to nail it in. Once you have your corner all nice and plumb, you're going to set the nail. Now the nail heads should be a little bit proud of the siding so that the siding can expand and contract. Okay, I've run a J-channel down the door, which was easy because this is already plumb. And then for the top, it's, it's always better in construction, or almost any measuring task, if you can set your trim in place. Now this is a, a J-channel. I'm just putting it up in place and then mark it here. That way you have a perfect cut and it's better than measuring with the tape measure over your head it's going to be a lot more accurate okay we're working on the top j channel i set a nail up here just to hold it and if you want good results you got to use a level now i purposely did not nail the soffit because i want the j channel to hold it up also nails in this aluminum will end up giving you wrinkles when the aluminum expands and contracts. So you want to use the, the least nails possible. And if you're looking for good results, you're going to want to take your time and use a level. And right here, that looks perfect. So I'm going to mark that and uh, I'm going to set some nails in there to hold it and then I'll use my level again down at the left side just to make sure it's perfect. Uh, it's these little details that just make the job uh, work out nice and true and that's what you want. So there's a stud right here. Remember, you don't want to set those nails. I leave a little, like, a little less than an eighth of an inch. That should be good. I'll put my level on it and nail it the rest of the way down. So now we're putting on the bottom starter strip. And you'll notice that you nail it up here. And then your hook on the bottom of your siding is going to hook on the bottom. I've actually seen this installed upside down. If you install it upside down, this, this nailing flange is going to be pointing down. So you want to make sure that you get that right. Now, this is like setting your first tile for a tile floor. Or setting your first row of bricks for a brick building. So you need to make sure that you get this nice and straight. If this is nice and straight and level, then your whole wall is going to go up straight and level. So I tacked one nail in, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go we're going to go through and level it, mark it, and then I'm going to come back and hammer it in. So right there is where I want it. 
We're going to take our pencil. We're going to mark it. And then we're going to tack in that nail right there. stud we're going to tack in more nails and I'm going to check it with my level when I get down to the other side okay we're ready to put up our first panel of vinyl so I took the long piece and I marked it in place and I cut it a quarter inch shorter than it actually needs to be that way it can expand and contract with different seasons. Now the bottom edge of this should hook on to our starter strip. So we'll drop that in there. And you need to make sure it locks in. Because if that's not locked in, then you're not level. And we're going to go through and we're going to tack this thing in place. I'll get a nail in here and then we'll check it for level just to make sure everything's good. And if it's slightly off, we can pull up a little harder or not pull up so hard to keep it level. On a small run like this shed, you'd have to be way off to notice that it's out of level. But if you're doing a building that has two windows and they're at the same height, and you start having problems with your thing being level, you'll notice it. So take your time, get that first one on there, nice and even. We're going to show you how to cut the vinyl. I always lay the strips with this back edge here against the fence. You'll get less tear out if you cut it that way. So we just line it up where you want to make your cut. I already have this one measured. And when you cut, you want to cut real slow. Now, I don't have a sliding compound miter, so I'm not going to be able to cut all the way through. <laughs> to finish the cut, I just use my aviation snips. Eyeball it and just make a straight cut right up to my line. To put pieces together, you want to lock together two factory edges. And you always keep your nailing flange on the top. So I already have a small piece nailed in here and I, I'm keeping the seam behind this bush just to try and hide it. The two pieces should lock together, just like that and then you fit it into place. Okay, so now we're at the window and we're gonna have to cut a notch out of this piece. First thing you wanna do is check the distance from this edge up to the bottom of the window and I'm getting exactly three inches so we'll leave a little play. We'll cut that at two and three quarters. So we don't want to forget that number. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fit our panel in place and we're going to mark right where the edges of the window is. So it's got to slide in right here and Right about there. So now we're going to mark our cut. And we're going to go up from the bottom two and three quarters. 
So it's about right here where this uh, fold is. So we'll start out by cutting on the compound miter saw and then we'll finish up with the knife. We're going to finish our cut on the back side just with the knife. The vinyl is very slippery so you just want to kind of take your time and I would recommend cutting it in two scores. First one being light and the second one pushing it a little bit harder but you have that track to follow. And that should take care of it. Let's check our fit. Took a little bit of uh, maneuvering, but I got the piece to uh, fit right in there real well. So now we can work on just going up the sides of the window. And we're just going to double check for level so that when we get up to the top of the window, we're sure both sides are going to meet evenly. So we're on the last piece. We're going to see how it fits over the window. Looks like it's notched out right. So now what we have to do is take a measurement from the bottom of this lip here up to the top and I'm getting about eight and one eighth. Yeah, so it looks like I'm gonna be cutting it at eight and one eighth. And it should fit in. I ripped down this piece using my utility knife and this strip that came off, we're going to use right now to help secure this panel so it doesn't blow out of the J channel. So we'll just tack this strip in. Slip it right up in here. This is the moment of truth. We'll see if this last piece fits. I put that extra strip in there because there's no way to nail this last piece. Well, that's it. We got it in there. It's nice and tight. It looks very level, straight. So uh, that's what you want. You want it to be a real tight fit so the wind doesn't grab it and blow it out. It's nice when you don't have a little piece of siding like an inch and a half wide to stick up in there because something like that, it's just not going to hold. So you want to try and calculate it so that you have full pieces of siding on your building. Anyhow, I'm double wide six, and as I said earlier, I have a full series on how to build this shed, 
and this concludes the vinyl siding video I'll include some links in the description to some of the tools that we used in this project